I don't have even a layman's brief with respect to glial cells, but have a proposition to put with respect to the function of retinal Muller cells. For those that have read even less than me, astrocyte cells, a type of glial cell, the most abundant of all brain cells, are now understood to be much more than passive supporters of neurological processes, or gap fillers. They are now appreciated to be propagators of long-range waves throughout the brain, and their activities are thought to make them players in neurological disorders, including ASD-related conditions and Alzheimer's. In the same way, retinal Muller cells, also a type of glial cell, provide more than passive structural support to the retina's array of intensity detectors, and are now appreciated to be contributing to receptor cell mediation. They too emit the signature phase activity, both spontaneously and when stimulated. Here we suggest the possibility that collectively glial cells form the basis for what is currently largely a covert phase-based processing system based on mechanobiology functions and brain structure, including its mosaics, involving reaction and diffusion processes and so the basis for our self-organizing mind. In the case of the retina and as part of decoherence, Processes involving passive absorption strip out a phase-based signal embedded within the light array. This then becomes associated with the dorsal stream, supporting our subconscious contextual awareness of the environment, significantly contributing to our sense of connection with the world and others, so underpinning our social interactions and culture and social structures. This would indicate that our makeup is dictated by our relationship with light, something that we don't fully understand, but involving a fundamental duality. Look, there's nothing to talk about here. There is nothing on the chair, or in the absence of an object in the focal area. Let's actually address the context in which things appear. How is contextual vision constituted? What could give rise to it? The suggestion made here is that Muller cells in fact play a considerable role in vision as passive phase transmitters, accounting for their observed structure. The retina decohering the light array by first uncoupling a phase component in the glial Muller cell as light is funneled to be detected in its photon expression at the retina's intensity receptors. Perhaps that's why intensity receptors are located on the back face of the retina, facing away from the incident light. This would identify rod and cone intensity-based processing as being, in effect, secondary. However, I can't help but feel that rods are involved in the development of the passive phase contribution at photopic levels, perhaps through their apparent saturation. I would also suggest that through mesopic and scoptic levels, the phase-based contribution becomes too weak to propagate and falls away releasing the rod to transform its function to become an intensity receptor. In evolutionary terms, perhaps intensity-related data potentials were a latecomer. None of this is going to be that clear-cut, of course, but let's just continue with the thread. The passive transmission of the phase data potential by Muller cells relying on reaction and diffusion processes, requiring convergence and synthesis deeper in the brain structures, but also utilising mechanobiological processes and structures. The phase data potential would not be something that could be interfered with as it propagates. We can't keep it company and monitor what's going on beyond knowing that something is going on. It presents to us upon command. We call it into being, and that is that. It can't be broken down into component parts, Readings cannot be taken. There isn't a temperature for us to take. The processes associated with the phase data potential would underlie perceptual structure, multi-sense integration, and provision implicit spatial awareness through a largely covert mechanobiological and phase-based function to be associated with the dorsal stream utilizing the retinocollicular pathway. The observed retinal waves that take place in the developing eye of an embryo prior to the formation of rods and cones, helping to organise and calibrate the system prior to our eyes opening. As I've pointed out in other vision space presentations, we appear to enjoy both an implicit form of spatial awareness, experienced as a field forming contextual vision, and an explicit function that assists us to contemplate form. 
The suggestion being that visual artists who address the entirety of phenomenal field have been developing methodologies and strategies for rendering visible the nature of the field structure, together with the relationship that it has with the data processing associated with central vision. Vision Space is a rendering system for the generation of visual media that operates in accordance with these intuitive insights, so we consider it to be modelling visual awareness. To facilitate this development, it was necessary to cross-fertilise the intuitive renditions with computational vision science. This duality between explicit and implicit takes on reality can be traced back to the retina as the origin of the two visual pathways the ventral what and the dorsal where. We know a good deal about central vision and the process is akin to the detection of light intensity but little about the processes involved in contextual vision. Indeed we can perhaps consider the possibility that we are partially sighted with respect to the formation of phenomenal field and the nature of visual awareness if not the nature of consciousness and awareness in general. Under the terms and constraints dictated by the oversight, we have developed instrumentation that likewise fails to transmit, processes or generate the fundamental phase-based component, the field. We have to consider that we are receiving a spatial impression from the environment on a monocular basis, and that the processing associated with this capability is essentially covert with respect to our current instrumentation. This leaves me as an artist with the unenviable task of piecing together a story by attempting to read between the lines of vision science research, whilst grasping at half-understood processes suggesting possible scenarios to encourage fresh thinking and new approaches to experimentation. To mainstream science, of course, I am outside the set. If I'm right, however, nothing remains the same. Our relationship with light changes, our understanding of retinal function changes. Our understanding of the visual pathways is transformed. We establish the basis for traceable links from data potential through processing to percept, and so handles on the nature of awareness, facilitating the development of an entirely new range of technologies with which to examine the physical world at all scales. These technologies would take into account what's actually involved in an act of observation. Vision space is the first perceptual technology and it works. We'd then need to confront the rather unedifying possibility that our awareness of the world, our responses to situations as individuals and groups and our social systems, even our cultures, are based on the subconscious self-organizing power inherent in reaction and diffusion, the same processes that govern behavior of slime mold, a system that developed in response to a data potential enfolded within the light array. With respect to questions relating to the nature of consciousness, I'm not really interested in it. I'm much more interested in the 90% of subconscious awareness that contextualizes the world for us. Consciousness being just an explicit trace that we keep moving through the context to pursue our intent in the world. If decoherence is responsible for the primary structures and pathways, then the processes involved are likely to be classical and not quantum mechanical in nature. However, the two takes on reality, implicit and explicit, have to be mediated, as neither contains the truth. Reality being a manufactured construct, a composite, organised and generated by mind. Mind understands perfectly well that the physical world is unified and not a duality, so it has to understand to some degree the relationship between light and the physical world. So perhaps mind becomes quantum mechanical by proxy. So I would see the calcium ion gates in glial cells to be associated with the phase or coherence aspect of a decohered signal. This would be phase space as opposed to Hilbert space, so not evidence of the direct quantum mechanical state of mind. What we encounter in the work of visual artists who break into their visual percept are paintings watermarked with the quantum mechanically related issues mind has to deal with in order to generate reality from the data brought to us by light relating to the physically real. If we look at the left hand chair painting by Van Gogh we can appreciate how the stereo composition materializes. In contrast in the right hand painting he places a candle as the light source in an attempt to show the radial aspects of the phenomenon 
the focal point structures spatial awareness, but he can't find the way to render this. If we then look at the gas lamp on the wall, the radial aspect is articulated as a sphere, but as him looking at the sphere from a remote third-party perspective. Becoming aware of, and then putting all the transitory, ever-changing factors together in one expression, one moment of structurally cognizant awareness, is not easy. If I'd got as far as Vincent did back in 1890, without there being any possibility of communing with anyone, I would feel fairly isolated. Part of a club of one. A very difficult place to be. The art science gulf was just too extreme. Science was not in a position to comment or follow due to its prevailing ontology, and artists were unable to establish the underlying platform, largely due to the extreme nature of the inward voyage required to even reach the coalface. A process that required the adoption of personal strategies that simply served to keep painters apart from one another. 